Christian Reflection, a meditation on the demands of the Christian life. It covers inspiring sermons and teachings, especially those related to the holy season of Lent. Lenten Reflection brings the good news to your doorsteps and accompanies you as you prepare for the great Christian celebration of Easter. Is it prayer, mortification, charity, or even church doctrine? Lenten Reflection is here to feed you with a living word of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for the grace you have given to us to see the light of another day. We thank you for bringing us together again to share your word amongst ourselves, especially in this season of Lent. Lord, we beg you to be the beginning and end of all that we do here today and say, prompt our actions into your grace and complete your upper powerful head. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good day, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I am Reverend Father Stephen Popa from Temple Diocese. I have come here today to reflect with us on the theme, Greatness as Service. And we shall take this theme from the scripture, from Matthew chapter 20, reading from verse 20 to 28. Then the wife of Zebedee came to Jesus with her two sons, bowed before him and asked him a favor. What do you want? Jesus asked her. She answered, Promise me that these two sons of mine will sit at your right and your left when you are king. You do not know what you are asking. Jesus answered the sons, Can you drink the cup of suffering that I am about to drink? He can, they answered. You will indeed drink from my cup. Jesus told them, But I do not have the right to choose who sits at my right and my left. These places belong to those for whom my Father has prepared them. When the other ten disciples heard about this, they became angry with the two brothers. So Jesus called them all together and said, You know that the rulers of the hidden have power over them, and the leaders have complete authority. This, however, is not the way it shall be among you. If one of you wants to be great, he must be the servant of the rest. And if one of you wants to be first, he must be your slave. Like the Son of Man, who did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life to redeem many people. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, Having heard of the conversation between Jesus, the family of Zebedee, and the other ten disciples, I would like us to pay attention to what Jesus said to his disciples in reply to their being indignant to the actions of the sons of Zebedee. He said to them, Anyone who wants to be great among you must be your servant. What does this say in mean? It tells us that greatness is in service. But how do we understand this? How do we apply this to our daily life? My dearest brothers and sisters, for us to have a better understanding of this teaching of Jesus, we need to ask ourselves some questions such as 1. What is greatness? 2. What is service? 3. How can someone be great through service? Let us look at them one after another. What is greatness? Looking at the old English word gratian, which means to become enlarged, we can understand greatness to mean the process of increase, growth, 
or expansion. This simply gives us an insight that greatness is an innate desire of everyone, since everyone wishes to grow from the present stage to a higher stage. We all want to be great in life, but how? Jesus gives us the answer through service. What then is service? Service, from the context of our discourse, is the action of helping or doing work for someone, which in other words means to grant assistance to someone of equal or unequal social status. It means, therefore, that service requires some virtues such as humility, meekness, diligence, and so forth. Having done this, the next question we should ask ourselves now is, how can service lead us to greatness? Yes, it's a good question to ask. How can someone be great through service? We all know that serving others means making space for their existence and seeing them as valuable and worthy to serve and be served simply because God views them that way. When we serve others, therefore, we enjoy the following and this will lead us to greatness. 1. We become more worthy. Let's take a look at what is happening in our present world today. Most of the worthy men in our world are those who have served the world in one way or the other. We take example the Facebook produced and initiated by Mark Zuckerberg to the world. He used that to serve the world and is earning from it. And that has made him great. That has made him a worthy man in the world. And there are many others who can mention those who produce using the WhatsApp and even the content creators, those who entertain us through the social medias. They serve the world in one way or the other, and today they are worthy and they are great. So when we serve others, we become more worthy. Becoming worthy is therefore reliant on our ability to serve others. Our growth and success are largely centered on our impact on others. That is the saying that goes, you rise by helping others. You rise by lifting others. Putting service at the center of our life reminds us that, one, to be a great leader, we need to serve others by guiding and motivating them. To be a great writer, we need to serve others by educating, inspiring, or entertaining them through your words. To be a great entrepreneur, you need to serve others by providing them with something that benefits their lives. Thus, focusing on how you can help others is a perfect anchor and guide to help you succeed in your work and in the financial benefits. The second thing we enjoy when we serve others is this. We learn and grow more when we serve others. Yeah, it seems like a counterintuitive process, but when you serve others, you often benefit more than them. For example, a few weeks ago, a friend of mine told me about his own experience, how he was asked to help facilitate an intellectual debate a few years ago where he was working and it was his first time to organize such kind of event. He does not have the confidence, he does not know how to go about it, but with few consultations he was able to do that and it was wonderful. That helped him to gain more confidence on himself. That helped him to gain more knowledge about how to organize an event of such kind. That helped him to, to also improve on himself. So, he learned and he grew through such kind of thing by serving others. Yes, it was a service to the community. It was a service to the company. But he benefited even more 
than those who gave in the contract. So my dear brothers and sisters, when we serve others, we learn more, we grow. And sometimes we even go to the extent that we become consultors in our own area. Therefore, greatness comes through service. The third thing I want us to pay attention again that we enjoy when we serve others is that through service we become happier. I remember the great man Mahatma Gandhi who once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself to the service of others. Yes, this statement is true because one of the biggest grantors of happiness is of course service to others. How? When you are feeling down, a surefire way to pick yourself up again is to do something nice for someone else. Like Mother Teresa of Calcutta will tell us, when you are helping others, the focus shifts from you to them. When you serve, you forget your own problems and are reminded that others also face difficulties in their lives. This helps you appreciate what you have and reminds you that you don't suffer alone. That brings happiness. But before I conclude this reflection, I want us to know that by serving others, you feel very useful because people we need you. People want you, they need your service, they want you to come. And that is making you look like a great person already in the eyes. Therefore, having a positive impact on someone's ex life reminds you of the value you bring and gives your life purpose. Feeling fulfilled makes you incredibly happy. Serving others too opens doors to solving your own problems. When you help someone else, you are gaining a new perspective. You are problem solving. You are gaining experience. Whatever your problems may be, helps you learn, helps you to adapt, and helps you to have a better chance of solving these issues. So my advice to you, my brothers and sisters, is this. I wish to say to you, that during this Lenten season, let us touch the dying through our service. Let us touch the poor through our service. Let us also touch the lonely and the unwanted according to the graces we have received. God has given each and every one of us grace. Use the grace that God has given you to serve others, to touch life especially in this season of Lent. And let us not be ashamed or slow to be humble and do the humble work that is required of us because service to others leads us to greatness. We pray that the reflection we have heard today will bear fruit in our lives and may the grace of God be upon us to carry it out daily, especially in this season of Lent. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mighty God and Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your word. We beg you that you give us the grace to learn more, especially to learn how to serve one another. And as you have told us that we can be great through service, Lord, we beg you, open our hearts to understand this and let us practice it in our daily life so that by serving others you will raise us up and bless us let your spirit be upon us let your word we have heard today bear fruit in our lives through christ our lord amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Oh